Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Prosper. Prosper is a peer to peer lending marketplace which connects people who are looking to borrow money with those who have money to lend. Visit prosper.com slash twit and receive a $50 Amazon.com gift card when you get a loan. And by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,000 high quality online courses and training videos, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash all about Android. That's L Y N D A.com slash all about Android. Hello and welcome to another episode of All About Android, episode 154, recorded on Tuesday, March 25th, 2014. We're your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. I'm Father Robert Ballas here. Aha! Aha! <laughs> I'm Gina Trapani. <laughs> Sorry about that. Should have should warned you about that, Chad. We also have Chad in again, once again. Hey, hey. Hey, yeah, Chad. Have I derailed the show yet? A little Darn. bit. Darn. A little bit. That's okay. At least you turn your lights on when you show your camera, as, as opposed that, to our other TV, Brian, who likes to hide in the dark. I could Brian it up for you if you want. Does he? Does he go full black? Or oh, he goes full. Oh, there he, we he go. This is that's him. He goes witness protection. You wouldn't even know if I if I did this. How would you know who's that's switching true. the show? <laughs> we can detect your red hair. <laughs> it's radiant. Uh, uh, we obviously Father Robert Ballester. It's awesome to have you back. We have you back once again. It's been a while since we have you on last. Uh, yeah, like three four months. It's. Yeah. Uh, it, I've, I've missed my, my AAA dose. Well, uh, miss no longer. Although we can miss just a little bit, uh, both Brian, obviously, because he's not here, and Ron, who had to bail somewhat last minute. You know, he's got a day job, and sometimes that interferes. I heard he was in jail. Let's not talk about it. Okay. Uh, today we have a lot to talk about. There's actually some really timely news today, and I love it. It keeps happening, so it's kind of strange. We'll be discussing the HTC One Mate, or M8, depending on how you like to say it. Google Now Everywhere. Uh, we'll be taking a look inside Project Tango. Some really interesting stuff happening there. Google's new cross-platform app for Chromecast, photo sharing, and so much more. But let's get right to the news. <laughs> 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 what was what? Take two. Okay, so tell me if you think this sounds if if this sounds ridiculous to you uh, or super smart. Billboard wrote about the fact that they have sources claiming that Apple is seriously considering bringing iTunes, uh, iTunes Radio to the Android platform. This would be in an effort to deal with double-digit declines in U.S. download sales. Did we ever think that this would even be a discussion topic on this show? Like, this is kind of... I'm not even sure whether I believe this or not, but uh, there it is. What do you think? I, I want to see it next week. I want to see it the week after that before I, I agree that this is not just some selective use of statistics. Yeah. I don't know. Is this a hell freezing over uh, if this comes true, Gina? What do you think? I don't know. I mean, it sounds pretty wild to me, but like, yeah. like iTunes runs on Windows, right? True. Yes. It's not that far afield from that. I mean, it, it would be pretty crazy. It'd be pretty crazy, especially since you know with Apple's history of you know, and uh, what was the, what was the phrase that Jobs used? That he used, you know, you spend his very last dollar to sue Google to hell for Android. Uh, so it would be pretty crazy, but um, I think it would be smart. You know, as an Android lover and w someone that, like you who's watched the numbers just creep up and up and up, I think it would be smart for them. But it would also be pretty pretty crazy. Um, I, I, I'd party. I'd party. If hell froze over and this happened, I'd party. <laughs> I, 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 I would party, but there's so would much. Would you silhouette party? I would silhouette party. Okay. I, I would party like it was 1959. But, I mean, when I, when I look at this, I'm wondering, this this doesn't sound like something they do, right? I mean, right. they're always, they've been about the purity of the experience. And... Opening it up like this, that's absolute awesome. Uh, absolute, absolute opposite of what they typically do. And I, I, don't, I don't really know why they would. I mean, this, this almost feels like when Sega said that they were going to become, oh, we're just going to be a game developer. Right. Or, uh, you know, yeah, it sounds like a, a smart move in the short term, but in the long term, you, you really doom yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. Like, I'm just I'm just trying to imagine a reality where you go to the Google Play Store and you see the developer <laughs> says Apple on it. And I right. just have a hard time envisioning that. Having said that, uh, according to Nielsen SoundScan, U.S. digital sales down 13% this year so far. Digital track sales down 11% for the same period. Uh, and it doesn't, you know, with kind of the instant streaming radio services that are kind of taking over for purchasing downloaded tracks and all this kind of shifting that's happening in the digital music space right now, I suppose that's a great way to open up your product to a large, a vast number of devices, obviously. It just kind of seems like if, if Apple does that, then... I don't know. There's the perception of, oh, well, they're kind of giving up on something that right. they've stuck to their ground, you know, stuck stuck to for so long. Uh, I don't know. I, I suppose Crazy. I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. I mean, look, I said iTunes runs on Windows, but look at FaceTime, look yeah. at iMessage. Those are all in in the Apple ecosystem, right? And don't mm -hmm. don't run any anywhere else. So that hasn't been the trend. Right. Uh, so I don't know, maybe hell really would freeze over. But, but I mean, it, I, I'd love would, to see it. Would Apple gain from FaceTime being an Android app uh, the way that they would gain from iTunes being an Android kind of offering? Well, I mean, I mean Google iTunes is a purchasing engine, right? right I mean, it's exactly. basically a cash register, right? FaceTime yeah. isn't I mean, FaceTime would just be a matter of, um, you know, compatibility. I mean, I, right. I literally have to think. We video chat with lots of folks with, with, my, with my daughter, and it's like, oh, wait, what device do they have? Oh, okay, we have to use Skype for them. Oh, sure. they have an iPad. All right, let's use FaceTime. You know, it's, it's always this thought of, like, what video chat service we have to use. Oh, that person uses Hangouts. Um, so... And yeah. iMessage is another big reason why no one, you know, people feel like they don't want to switch from iOS because they just, they use iMessage amongst all their friends, and um, that's just a closed messaging system yeah. but they but apple certainly has much more to gain from from itunes right sure um, I, I guess on, what on the reason that i ask is because you know google plays the opposite tactic right well right. not on everything but google is no stranger to releasing their services on the ios platform as apps and in some cases i mean take hangouts for example uh in some ways it's better on ios than it is on android uh, because of the voice calling features that android doesn't have yet so they still do this even though well i don't know maybe it's just different with google because they gain based on that information that they gather from the users well if i Apple really wanted not. to sell myself on this i guess what i could say is when you look at FaceTime, when you look at iMessage, those are platform distinguishers. And you don't want to remove your platform distinguishers, right? You right. want to keep those because that's the reason why someone would buy into your platform. Sure. But all the media sales, that's more of a service distinguishment, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I can open that up to other platforms without taking away my platform distinguishers. And I, I'm sure there's there's some executive at Apple who's, who's mulling that over. How much do we lose versus opening up to a much larger market to sell our services and media. Mm -hmm. And is it actually a little too late for that? Right, right. I mean, they, they open mm -hmm. it up, but is that going to generate, a, you know, as much as it would have had they done this a couple of years ago versus kind of what they're looking at now as far as kind of competitors in the space and the already established, you know, power of, of those those apps. Can, can, I, can I be the snarky jerk? Please. Okay. So for for more than a few years, I've heard, oh, well, you know, yeah, sure, there's more Androids being sold, but people who spend money buy the iOS platform. They're uh -huh. in the iOS experience. And now it almost sounds as if they're saying, okay, yeah, maybe they spend more on iOS, but uh, we still like a, a big piece of that pie. Even though right. even though you're inferior it's users. It's hard to deny. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's hard to yeah. deny. It, it's, it's coming down to money now. They're saying, look, even if the typical Android user spends one-tenth of what a typical iOS user spends, there's still so many more of them that we can't ignore that anymore. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and that's a fantastic point. And snark. Excellent. <laughs> Slash snark. Good Slash job. snark. Good snark. In Good snark. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so Gina, speaking of, well, I guess speaking of Google services going into other places, this is, this is cool. Yeah, this is really good news. Google has uh, integrated Google Now into the latest stable release of Chrome. So this is the Chrome that everybody uses, not just the, the beta users and the alpha testers and the dev developers. So even those people using a browser can get in on Google Now action. Google Now cards uh, will just flow down in your in your Chrome settings. No settings are required to get it going. You just have to be signed into Chrome, the Chrome browser, using the same Google account that you use on your mobile device. You'll see those same cards that you see on Android. 
And um, I, I, this is this is great news. I've had this for a while because it's been in the beta for a while. Uh, and I, you know, I just I just love it. It just seems like Google now going to places beyond just Android is 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 only a good thing. Although I will say that it's it's a little bit of an awkward interface for the desktop. Yeah, that was going to be my question right there. Yeah, on the mobile device. So what do you guys think about this? Do you think Google now in, in, in Chrome is just sort of wedged in there because because they wanted it to be everywhere or does it actually work? I haven't used it. I only enabled it today. By, by the way, you can force enable this if you do Chrome colon, I think it's slash slash flags and then do a search for Google now. In, in Chrome in the Chrome browser, you can enable it from there and not wait for the automatic kind of default to switch, which is going to happen sometime in the next couple of weeks. But, Father Robert, have you have you experienced this? I have. I actually, so I, I had it on my desktop, but I, I just had a button there for Google Now and a button there for, uh, for Hangouts. And I didn't have any microphone or speaker hooked up to my desktop. And I thought, ah, okay, I'll, I'll play with it later. Yeah. Until I heard a ringing and it was Google Hangouts actually having an incom incoming oh, yeah. call. I had speakers on my monitors I had completely forgotten about. And I answered it thinking, well, I'll listen who, who's talking, but there's no microphone. And I found out <laughs> there was actually a microphone built into the monitor that I didn't know about. <laughs> and at first I thought that was, okay, that was kind of surprising. Then I thought it was kind of cool. Then it was also, oh my God, I really had a microphone built in on this micro the monitor the whole time I didn't know about. And, and then I started it's a playing. Spooky. With, yeah, I started playing <laughs> with Google now. And, and, uh, I have to say, it's actually way more useful than I thought it would be. Hmm. Uh, I thought it would just sit there; it'd be a curiosity. But I, yeah. I probably use it two or three times a day. So, because when I think of of what I see on Google now regularly, it's always weather. Like weather's there by default, and it's usually navigation to some place, work or home, mm -hmm. whatever. Which the navigation, I'm not sure that would be entirely too beneficial in the Chrome browser. What is so useful uh, that you're getting notified in your browser? What's so useful is because it synchronizes across all the devices right. that I have. Um, like it knows that I go to Twit every day and mm -hmm. it, it tells me when I have to leave and it tells me yeah. uh, what appointments I have attached to Twit. And it's figured all that out without, you know, it's, it's the typical G Google data that people get and they get fascinated by, but it's actually customized it. It knows when I'm at my desktop because it gives me the things I should know sitting down that don't show up on my phone. I have no idea how they do that. I don't know mm -hmm. how the engine works, but it works really, really well. Mm -hmm. Wait, like what? What's, a, what's an example of something that you've seen on your desktop that you haven't seen on your phone? So like uh, on my desktop, it'll tell me how long it's going to take me to get to the brick house and when I should leave. Once I get in the car, if I check, if I check my cards, that disappears. It knows that I'm mm. moving and it doesn't give me that data anymore. I, mm, and I have no, nice. I didn't set that up. It just it does that. The first couple of times but I it thought it was an accident. It doesn't prompt it for you to get navigation. Nope. Uh, well, no, because uh, I it, it I guess it knows I've driven that so many times. It no longer even gives me that option. Hmm. Uh, hmm. But if I have if I have it also does the same thing. Let's say I have an appointment down in San Jose. It will tell me when I have to leave, and then in the car, it, the first card that pops up is navigation. Mm -hmm. Which uh, again, I I don't know the algorithm that they're using, but. I guess I've been using Chrome enough across so many different computers that it finally has enough data to know what I'm going to use it for. I love that. That's cool. Hmm. cool. Kind of invasive, but cool. Right? Yeah, like th th and that's kind of what I'm hoping about Google now on the, in, in Chrome. Like I activated it. I haven't really seen any notifications yet. So maybe, maybe my activating it didn't actually do anything because I did that earlier today. I haven't seen anything, but I'm hoping over time it kind of begins to make more sense because... I'm used to the Google Now that's really handy when I'm out and about, right. and, you know, with my mobile device and sitting down at a desktop. I'm kind of like, okay, I guess it's nice to know the weather in that card. Um, but yeah, I I, we'll you see. know, right? Like you can only see the, the weather so many times. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay. It's yeah. raining. Yeah. Yes. It's so I always, I'm always yeah. really good at knowing what the weather is. Let's <laughs> give it that. Oh. It's the first time that I've ever questioned the t the name Google Now because who how many other people read this as Google now available for all Chrome <laughs> desktop users? Because <laughs> I was like I thought Google was available for Chrome desktop users for a long time. No, nope, really just now, just now, just now they're now. now it's available. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, uh, some people in the chat were asking, uh, Google Now and Voice Search are two different things. Voice Search obviously is the voice input aspect of it, ties into Google Now. Google Now is really the cards interface and 
kind of that predictive uh, algorithm offering up cards that are related to whatever you happen to be doing. So there you go. I think I think it's a great thing. We all knew that eventually this was going to happen. It's been in the beta channel on Chrome for quite a while. And even before that, it was kind of the no-brainer, like, duh, now's their thing. Like, right. now's going everywhere. So uh, good to see it finally take place. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of Google Now, we know that uh, there have been certain key phrases that have been built into Google Now, like take a picture or take a video that will launch the appropriate app. Well, they've added a new one. You can now say play some music, and it's essentially the I'm feeling lucky button from the Google search engine. What it will do is it will launch the music player and then go through your library looking for music that it thinks you may want to listen to. It's, it's sort of like an audio jukebox. Here's the cool thing. If you subscribe to the Google service for music, it will not just choose from your inventory. It will choose from an infinite number of songs that are available for streaming. This is sort of a Google's next attempt to give you everything that you want at a voice command. And I haven't played with it, but it, it looks like it's promising. I, yeah, I think see. music is one of those few places that we really want discovery. Play some music. Uh, or not. Oh, yeah, well, you know Come what? On. Hold on, hold on. I think. Hold on. Here we go. It's confused. Play some music. Is it because of this? Because of the headphone? Yeah, it's I because of the that? headphone. Okay. One Play some music. There we go. That worked. Now, yes. So, now it'll go it through. Playing requests. It's going to go to play. I'm feeling lucky radio. And it's playing In and Out of Grace by Mud Honey. We want to be free. Is that a good choice? We want to be free. Um, well, you know, I've listened to a little bit of music from, uh, you know, my, my grunge years lately. <laughs> so I guess it is. I get I mean, you know, Nirvana and maybe, you know, outside of grunge. I was listening to Guar yesterday and... Tribute to the late uh, lead singer of Guar. Um, so yes, I suppose so. I don't know. I'm feeling lucky. Randomized radio, like it could really pick anything and be applicable somehow. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. still, I I did actually use it last week when I was lazy and just wanted to play some music, and uh, I didn't turn it off. It did a good job playing yeah. something that I was interested in. I'm lazy all the time, and <laughs> basically you know, use Pandora and like just would you know pop in a song I liked and, and let it go. But I've switched to All Access. I've subscribed to All Access, yeah, and I've been access. using you know I'm feeling lucky radio quite a bit. And you look, you know, there are some times when I do I'm feeling lucky, and it gives me a bunch of Broadway tunes, and I'm not just not feeling Broadway at the moment. But you just you know you just roll the dice again. It's literally like that little dice icon, mm -hmm. and I, I kind of dig it. I have to say. Um, I found some good songs, and I, and I found myself rating songs, giving thumbs up and thumbs down to songs uh, more, which you you know you do in Pandora as well, so it learns a little bit more. So I, I dig I'm feeling lucky radio, I have to say, and I I am pretty lazy. I just want to hear stuff that I like. I don't want to have to curate or make playlists or anything. Yeah, and one thing I noticed, especially because like I listen to music primarily when I'm getting in the car, going somewhere, mm -hmm. driving somewhere. I'm going to put some music on if I'm not going to listen to an audiobook or a podcast or something like that. If I want to listen to music, I have to open up the the Play Music app. I have to scan through, find the album that. I want to listen to blah 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 if I can just say play this which I think for a while you've been able to do but now I'm feeling lucky when you're feeling completely lazy and it does the rest it literally launches right into it and I don't have to you know stare at my phone for five minutes and sit in my car you know waiting to do that and pick something I'm all for it the easier that gets I'm all for it now now Gina I can you design us an app on top of this a layer on top of this that listens for user response. So if it starts playing a song and I go, ah, oh, it skips. <laughs> but if I start singing along, it says, okay, you yeah, don't. this is his groove. This is his funk. Give him give him the next one in this series. That's a, that's, that's a, that's. There you go. It's <laughs> yours. There's someone, there's someone in Google working on that, okay? It's like, okay, now listen for whatever the, you know, vocal response is from the, from the user and tra use that for training data. That'd be awesome. Now that would um, be Get Lucky Radio. That would be. That would be. Uh, it also does a couple of other things, actually. Um, you can take a picture. So take a picture. And it launches your uh, camera app. Or take know, a video. Or take a video, and it'll launch you into video mode on your camera app. So um, it doesn't actually take the picture right then and there. It doesn't? I thought it did. Um, nope. Did no. It? Huh. That's just but so. Here, take a take picture as launch camera. camera. Basically, there we go. Yeah, is exactly. Okay. Not entirely sure why, but okay. Yeah, I, I, but I, but I, I do think it's that is is kind of interesting in what that might mean going forward in Google Now. Right. I think if, that's what this is. Yeah. If it's if it's an example of here's a voice action that launches an app or launches an action 
that is tied to an app in particular. Maybe at some point developers get access to the ability to do the same thing uh, in a greater you know, capacity. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is the training, right? They're training sure. their users because, sure, I could say launch the camera. I could say launch the camcorder. I could say launch the music player. But what Google wants to do from here on is say, don't worry about the app. Just tell me what you want. You know, uh, play some music, order some food, you know, mm -hmm. call my friend. It, it wants to get us used to speaking to Google now in, in sort of natural language. I think that's the next generation of the app. Right. And cheesecake. And cheesecake. cheesecake. Thank you, Chad. Thank you for that. <laughs> All right, so we had a post in the All About Android uh, community on Google+. Plus. Marlon, the guy from Trinidad, uh, he's always got something to say, and it's great. He's, he's, he's so active in the community, so thank you for doing that, Marlon. Uh, he says, so Google Now got the keywords, take a picture, take a video, and play some music, and while it may be much faster to navigate to the app, I think this is a bigger play. What if you had your DSLR? with Android Wear set up to take some pictures and you speak into your watch and it takes that picture. Or even better, you come home and your Android Wear connected sound system hears you say, play some music into your watch and up comes your I'm feeling lucky playlist. I think we'll see more and more contextual phrases in the next few months as Google wants us wants to get us talking more and more. I know I'm doing it. Just today I was walking, listening to an audio podcast and somebody said something I wanted to check. I went to my home screen, asked my question, the podcast paused while Google read out the answer and then resumed and I continued listening to the podcast. Yes, I've done that many, many times while on the road somewhere. Um, so this is kind of an extension of what we're talking about, right? Like yep. maybe maybe at some point Google Now and the voice actions becomes a trigger for many things. And, and what, what Marlon is saying here is not just inside the app, but outside of the app, you know, controlling other things. That's actually pretty cool. Contextual. It's like, so uh, I, I drop a drawer on my head and go, ah! Oh, and it says, would you like me to call an ambulance? <laughs> or, or, <laughs> would you like me to uh, record in YouTube and That's right. <laughs> record your response? Or, or I start, again, I start singing a song that's stuck in my head and it just starts playing it. Oh, yeah. I, I would told, go. well, that would get annoying after a while, but it would be fun the first couple of times. <laughs> yeah, every once in a while I accidentally sing out loud, Friday, Friday, and I would not want to hear no. that. No. Because uh, it already sucks that it's yes. stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a break and thank our first sponsor of today's episode. That would be Prosper. If you knew that in 72 hours you'd have $35,000 to cover what, uh, your needs, whatever you happen to need to do, uh, what would you do? Would you pay off your high rate credit cards? Would you uh, start a business, uh, work on that home improvement project? Uh, Prosper makes this kind of thing easy. You just fill out an online easy application, provide a few details and see a rate almost instantly. Prosper offers low fixed rates, unsecured personal loans with no collateral required. As a multi-year, uh, have, they have multi-year terms available. And, uh, you know, I've already talked about it plenty of times, but it's, it's my needs. We, we, we're fine on the car front. We're, we're hurting on the house front. We got things we need to do uh, in the house. And, uh, you know, it all adds up really quick. Uh, I'm getting pretty sick of our kitchen, and we've only been in the house a month and a half, and I want an entire kitchen remodel. So this might be the way to do that. Prosper's Silicon Valley's answer to personal loans with Prosper's innovative peer-to-peer -peer lending process. There are no outrageous fees, no raising interest rates, and you'll never set foot in a bank. Prosper has more than 2 million members, lenders, and borrowers and over $900 million in funded loans. It's this peer-to-peer -peer lending process that kind of sets it apart. It's, it's distributed funding of your loan. It really makes sense, especially for, you know, folks like us in the technology world. You know, we, we live and breathe tech. Take what you know about peer-to-peer uh, -peer services online uh, and how that is distribu distributed. I am content delivery, file sharing, streaming media. Apply that to the financial word. And essentially, essentially uh, peers are lending that money to you in a distributed manner thanks to Prosper. Uh, just go to prosper.com slash twit uh, to check your rate instantly without affecting your credit score. And that's a pretty important point right there. Uh, for a limited time, Prosper is offering Twit viewers a $50 Amazon.com gift card uh, just uh, when you get the loan. Go to Prosper.com slash Twit, and that's a special site just for our viewers. Up to $35,000 in just three days and receive a $50 Amazon.com gift card when you get the loan. That's Prosper.com. They're not affiliated with Amazon for gift card details, visit prosper.com slash twit. And we thank Prosper for their continued support of All About Android. 
All right. Uh, we've danced around it, but let's get to it. The big news of the day in hardware. I'm in big trouble, you guys. Uh-oh. You know, Is the honeymoon I over? One. Yeah, I, I love my HTC One. I really do. Uh, but today, its successor, the uh-huh. Mate. I like. I hadn't heard anybody pronounce it Mate, but now I'm going to call it the Mate. Is the HTC One M8, the HTC One Two, the second HTC One, whatever however you want to call it. It's the new one. It's gonna. It's just the the new HTC One. It got announced today. It's available now, and man, it looks nice. Yeah. It looks really, really nice. Uh, gosh, where to start? Um, so the well, the Verge did a great a great review as usual uh, and a very positive very positive review. A lot of the leaks that we saw what turned out actually to be true. <laughs> uh, the one looks a lot like the original one, a little little softer, a little more rounded. Um, gorgeous gorgeous specs. Those two two dual cameras on the back, which as we talked about, uh, basically capture depth information and let you refocus your photos kind of after the fact. Uh, the Verge says that HTC kind of whooped the HTC One's battery problem, which I'm actually going to talk about a little bit later because this phone actually really does have a battery problem. Hmm. Um, and this phone just looks gorgeous. It's got this kind of brushed metal, a little bit more of a softer look. It's still got those front those front speakers that sound really good. Um, I can rattle off specs, but that's that's no fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's available now, one ninety nine through Verizon, AT and T, and Sprint. Seven hundred bucks for the Google Play edition, and I'm dying over here because you know I just don't do contracts, but I don't have six between six and seven hundred dollars to drop on a new phone right now, especially since my phone is already pretty new. Oh, and the last thing I should I should mention about it, and I want to throw it to you guys to see what you think about this: the dot view case. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is this is kind of a really neat case on the phone. I think uh, there must be a picture in here somewhere, Chad. Yeah, the, the Android um, Police article has uh, has a video that kind of shows it off, actually. Yeah, this is a re- kind of a neat neat case. So yeah, you can see it there. It's it's a cover that covers the screen that's got dots, and when when you touch it, it can actually show the time and the weather again with the weather. Aww. When you double tap it, that's it shows neat. the time and the weather right through the case. It's like and a, a light kind of really bright. Neat yeah. Design. yeah, it is like a light bright. It is like a light bright. <laughs> it's got that cool retro but like modern, you know, look to it. I'm not, I, I don't use cases. I don't put cases on my phone generally, yeah. but uh, but that's really neat. I also love the double tap to wake up the phone feature. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm often fumbling for the power button, especially when the phone is kind of stuck in my pocket. I'm not sure which went, which end is up. Uh, but they moved, they moved the, the uh, headphone jack to the, to the top or sorry, to the bottom and moved around a couple other things. There's a, there's a camera setting for selfies. Um, they, there's got this dual camera shot where we'll take a shot with the front and the back. There's some Zoe improvements. A bunch of the HTC um, Sense apps have gone out of the Play Store, which makes updating easier. I don't know, what do you, what do you guys think about this phone? Is this a, are, would you consider giving up your Nexus 5 for the M8, Jason, or are you, are you good? <sighs> Well, I mean, I I think I'm good, though I really like the look of this phone. Um, it would just, man, it would just be really hard for me personally to move away from the Nexus device at this point. Um, yep. Yep. I, having Even said, with the Play Edition. Yeah, well, I mean, again, it falls into that category of like the Play Edition is a great option. And I mean, you you have sung the praises of the, of the Play Edition for the HTC One. But some of the really interesting things about this device with the dual cameras kind of probably hinges around you know, the software that HTC has built into there, the Play Edition, I'm wondering if it's even going to be able to tap into some of that stuff. The dual camera stuff, by the way, I saw Alex Lindsay, uh, who's frequently on Mac Break Weekly here on the Twit Network as, you know, Pixel Core. He was doing a, uh, a hangout with Verizon to kind of show off some of the photo. You know, he was there to kind of show off uh, his his what he thought of the device and his his kind of interaction with the photo features. And he showed off, they showed off live the zooming, the dynamic zooming between the fore and the background and kind of explained the technology behind it. And I got to say that was pretty cool. I don't know if it's like the reason to get the device, but it's really nice to have it on there. It looks pretty neat. Is uh, the, that the process was pretty sweet. Is that licensed from Lytro? Is that Lytro? I don't know if it's licensed. I mean, it's similar to Lytro. Mm. It absolutely is a very similar uh, in you know, in use. I, I've seen my cha- my taste change over the last couple of years. Yeah. I I love Samsung, I, or I used to love Samsung. I had an S2, an S3, and now an S4. 
Uh, but the, the Achilles heel for me has always been the absolutely horrible camera. Uh, and I didn't used to care about that, but recently I've been using it a lot more, and it bothers me every time I get a horrible, fuzzy, low-light, washed-out picture. Mm -hmm. If if they really have solved the uh, the one the, the mate's battery problem, then and if it could give me a good camera, I, that that might be the the phone I switch to. I've been thinking about Motorola, but that looks sexy. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a beautiful it's a thing of beauty. Yes. It's a really beautiful phone. I, I have to say, um, I, that that was a, that was a reason why I bought these. Do you want to begin with it? I mean, yeah, you could just get the black slab, and that's cool. Like the black slab is cool. The Nexus Five is also a gorgeous phone, but I just I really like that the one had style, and the, and the M8 seems to continue to have that style. The lines are a little softer, um, but they've got that brushed kind of metal that's rounds around the back that looks really nice. Um, and uh, yeah, I I, I I I dig it. I still think it's a it's really a looker. Um, and The Verge says that the battery the battery problems have been worked out. So that that's a big one for me. Mm -hmm. I often get photos where, you know, the you know, my kid or, or the dog is blurry and, and the background is is sharp in focus and it makes me nuts. It drives me crazy, you know, because it's like, oh, if I had just tapped that person to focus in, but you don't have time to tap when you're taking no. a picture. Um, so I like the idea that I could, you know, adjust that after the fact. Um, and if the shutter is fast enough. Then fine, I'll accept that I needed two sensors and mm -hmm. special software to deal with that. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. I will say that the style, it's beautiful, but the style will be lost on me because I, I put all my phones in a case. Yeah. That's fair. That's, that's that, a hard that one too, nice. right? That is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's hard for me to put a phone in a case, even though I know I probably should. So, so HTC, <laughs> if you, if you wanted to send like six of those things to the Rick House, we could probably do a pretty good review. Just, uh, <laughs> One of them. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> probably should also note that they are actually releasing some of their key apps to the Play yes. Store, similar to what Google has done with their key apps. Uh, so Blink Feed, Gallery, Sense TV, Service Pack, and a companion app for their Fetch accessory all on the play store to be updated individually um yeah so i, I don't know i i i think it's a great looking device and uh, i'm very curious to play around with it and kind of see some of these advanced features it always though comes back to do i like sense or do i like you know to go a little bit more straight you know straight google launcher um i'm probably more on the latter but Doing the latter with this device, you're going to lose some of those features. And I guess you just have to ask yourself if, if that is worth it. Yeah. If this right. is the device for you, if if you're losing those features, those key features. So. Right, right. But you could, I mean, at this point, though, couldn't you just switch your launcher to the Google Now launcher away from... No, well, it's more than that, right? Sense is, is more deeply embedded than that. Well, I mean, said that, that Sense is kind of without, with, with throughout. That's a really good question. I'm not, and I'm not sure that you can do that yet, anyways, with the Google with the Google Now launcher. I think the new, Google Now launcher right now is limited to Nexus devices. Is it also limited to Google Play devices? But if yeah, so, yeah, then yeah. you're then you're bypassing the Sense stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. that you can do that with the the Play launcher. But I mean, there are other launchers that are very similar. You know, um, right. Right. So yeah. it's not like you can, the, the Google Now launcher did come out on Google Play Edition devices, and I can switch between you know the the stock launcher and the Google Now launcher on, gotcha. on this device. But this right. is super unlocked in Google Play Edition, and it's a different different situation than right. uh, the HTC build. Sure. Sure. Uh, well, uh, other interesting devices. Yeah. This, this so, one. Uh, I, what's weird about this article <laughs> is like this. I feel like it was missed. Somehow, yeah, yet just, there's so much information. This in was here. the first time I'd actually heard about it. When yes, you put it in the and like I searched, I searched all around, and like hardly anyone's commenting about this. Anyways, yeah. sorry. So fr from the folder of four segues from a, a mate to taking two to Tango, we got Ooh. Podtick Tango, Google's 3D scanning device. Uh, it's a phone that was just starting to be released to developers. Now the kit includes both USB 3.0 and 2.0 ports uh, because there is a lot of data to transfer, all the cables and chargers that you need to get it uh, going. And actually the, the Makezine shows the kit that they received. Interesting little device. It actually uses four different cameras. It's got the forward facing camera. It's got the rear facing camera. It's got a wide angle rear facing high contrast camera, a depth sensing camera. And then it's also got the IR sensor, which is actually included on any of the cameras. The, what happens is once you start programming for this, you could take the composite image from those four different cameras and figure out a, a 3D model. 
Now, in in his playing around, he he was uh, tweaking the SDK, and he was able to get a, a 3D image of his house and of his kids. It it turned out okay, but obviously it's going to require a lot of SDK wizardry before you get something that's actually usable uh, by a program. But but I love this program because. The, they, they do give you the SDK, and they, they give you all the hooks into every piece of hardware that they give you in the development kit, which means the sky's the limit. I mean, as, mm -hmm. as, as much as you can dream about compositing those images and, and extrapolating data from it, you can make it work inside that phone. Uh, right now, it's a bit of a battery hog, of yes. course, because it's yeah, it, it sucks the power. Just think what it's doing. It's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, uh, I, I believe he was saying if you're going to be working on this at all, just keep it plugged in. Just don't don't even put it on the battery because. Yeah, right. you'll, you'll be sorry. Uh, but again, very early days. I, I don't think this is something that's going to be available on all phones at any mm -hmm. given time. But uh, Gina, and I want to get your input on this. To include the development kit inside of a phone format says a little something about where they want developers to take this, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so no way. I, so, okay, so the, the SDK comes with comes on the phone, ships on the phone, or you install it on the phone? Sorry, I'm, I'm getting my brain around around this. Right, no, so the phone the phone is basically just the hardware platform, and then, then you you, gotcha. uh, you install the SDK on, on the computer that's connected to the phone, and, the, right. and now you can actually use the data coming off of the device. Got you, got you, got you, I understand. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so this this means that you can scan. Hmm, this is, this is really cool. This is really cool and interesting. What, but what do you? So what do you do with it? I guess yeah. <laughs> well, that's the question, that's the question. Right? I mean, I, I, you map yeah. your house. Yeah, you map your house. <laughs> and, and yeah, so right now it's sort of like yeah. okay, it's cool. I can see four different camera right. angles, and I could see IR. I could see near field, far. I, I think this is part of the program just to give developers some cool hardware to play with. Right. And then let them figure out what to do with it. Hardware that's capable of doing things that you might not have had the ability to do before. Right. Let your imagination run right. wild. I know that when they first announced this, they showed some videos of like a, you know, where you could map a, a part of your room and then basically have like an object kind of, you know, bouncing or bouncing along the walls and down the trim and everything based on the 3D mapped right. information that it had gathered. Uh, so yeah, I, I, well, these, these I guess technologies, we'll see what people come up with. Yeah, exactly. That's the exciting thing about a device like this. These technologies have all existed, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you if you got to connect in your uh, in your house, you you have these technologies. But to put these technologies in a portable device to give people an easy to use SDK mm -hmm. to give them the hooks that would standardize how the data is stored. So, for example, I could take a 3D image of X, and someone else could take that data run it through the SDK and drive a 3D printer, now we've right. got something. I think that's what they're trying to foster. Mm -hmm. Right. So I can take a selfie and then, you know, print out a bust of myself or I can see something at a store that I really want and take a picture and then, you know, print one out at home, essentially. Um, <laughs> so we could we could have Ron take a selfie of himself and then have, have a 3D printer build his face during the episode. We, we've right? always wanted to do <laughs> that. <laughs> now we can, finally. We can. The future is here. Years later, we can make it a reality. <laughs> we could, we could do we could do a printout of that face mash a photo of you and me, Jason. Oh That'd boy, awesome. <laughs> I'm happy to say that that probably will not be able to happen because we didn't have the device when we did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you haven't no, seen it, yeah, no, you don't want to. Yeah, yeah, no. Sorry, I shouldn't have brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sore subject there, Gina. <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> Actually, it reminds me I need to re reinstall that app on my phone because I love that app. Uh, let's see here. So, actually, in other kind of wearable, you know, interesting hardware news here, Motorola hosted a hangout with the lead designer of the Moto 360 smartwatch team. Uh, and all the discussion didn't contain a whole lot of, you know, earth-shattering details, uh, but we did get a few more interesting bits. Battery performance, they say, takes a lot of the lessons learned from the Moto X, uh, things like better battery power management uh, and extra sensors inside the device. A secret charging method, as the device actually has no ports, no plugs, so you have to imagine some sort of wireless charging, which for a wearable, for a, a smartwatch, I think is perfect. 
I think that that is essential. Any of the smartwatches that I've ever tested for Twit or worn and used, that's always one of my big complaints is uh, every night it's another thing to plug in and you got to find the port and open up the port cover and everything. Just setting it on a pad and letting it charge, that's beautiful. It's just like setting it on the, on the table, you know, on your nightstand when you go to bed, uh, which is what you do with a normal watch anyway, so that's perfect. Uh, yeah. Works with all Android 4.3 uh, devices and up, 4.3 and up. And it's water resistant, no camera, global availability. That's kind of it. Uh, where did you stand on the uh, on the Android Wear announcement, Padre? It, it's one of these things where I'm 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 at the point where I think we've proven that there could be a market for for this. I think the early devices, especially from Samsung, were were sort of well, would anyone buy this? And now they're sort of just tinkering with the hardware. They're, they they know there there could be a market. You just have to include the right hardware and put it in the right format. And, and that's that's actually gotten me kind of excited. I don't know if the 360 is what I want on my wrist, um, but I don't mind that it doesn't have a camera. I don't mind that it no, has that. quote unquote limited functionality, because now it feels as if it's not just another phone they strapped onto your wrist. Now it feels as if oh, okay, there's a use case here. You're, you're mm -hmm. going for specific function. I I, I kind of like that. It's tailored for some uh, specific right. use. Um, and then, not to be outdone, LG released a, an official press photo of its G Watch device to its Facebook page. So we get a nice, clean shot of the G Watch. There it is. If you don't like round, you get <laughs> rectangle. It's like my Casio from 1980. <laughs> I want to see how how deep it, how thick it is. I, I want is, that hand is so photoshopped. It, it really is. It looks wow. like a yeah. <laughs> I totally. It's a it robot looks virtual. Hand. Yes. <laughs> Seriously, that looks like it's a real 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 watch. Titan virtual fall. hand. <laughs> I like to think that there's just a few the, a team at LG that's just like. Come on, we were gonna do a watch too. Like, why? Why is no one talking about our watch? What? Because like, they went with the round. Maybe, maybe we don't have enough photos. Let's throw together some photos. Generate a photo. I don't care. Any photo we, will work. Like, but, but we don't have a wrist to put it on. Here, uh, Greg, oh. you're good at programming video games. So right. create a virtual wrist exactly. to put it on. Is there an eye stock photo we can use anywhere? <laughs> like, that's probably exactly what happened. I mean, and everyone's been talking about the Moto 360, and I, I do feel like there's a team at LG that's just like oh, well yes because oh, because Android no Wear at, in the SDK has support for square and circle right that's right and so you know Motorola was like okay circle is a challenge but it's the right one to do right out of the gate because everyone's going to be talking about it. So all LG had to do was do the circle, and they'd be the first ones with the circle. But I, I imagine that's probably easier said than done. <laughs> you know, actually, I'd like to revise my earlier answer. Now, okay. looking at the two of those together, I would absolutely go with the 360 over the yeah. the old Casio calculator watch from, L, from LG. Just because you're yeah. used to seeing... There's nothing sexy yeah. about it. It's just like, yeah... It looks pretty nerdy next to the 360. It I totally feel like does. The 360 is almost a little too old school, but the but the LG watch does seem like like a Casio. Yeah. Yeah, Chad, can you? Is there any way you can put those side by side? Because I think uh. that's that's the <laughs> selling point right there. You look at those and you go, oh yeah, okay. This, now the 360 looks so much cooler next to the LG. I'm sorry to say that again. If you're an engineer at LG, I, I I'm really really sorry. I'm sure your stuff's really cool too, but it's not round. Yeah. So there. <laughs> this is where Chad earns his money. That's, well, I know it's paycheck. funny because I know that there's a video on the Android Wear like thing yeah, that yeah. has it. And, <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm quickly trying to find that video because they showed them both next to each other. And um, that's for later. All his Here. Uh, bam. <gasps> bam. Oh. Three, two. Bam. There you go. There you go. Oh, okay. Yeah. No contest. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's not even close. No. Nope. Who, who wants that? Yeah, who wants the square well, thing if you could have round? Especially if you're comparing side by side, like the the uh, the 360 has, you know, the kind of chrome yeah. details. Yeah. And that was, yeah. The that, G Watch has the, the plastic. It's all plastic. Which we're used to seeing. I mean, yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. G Shock. The oh, one the on the left will probably cost twice as much. Yeah, but. you know you're going to be paying more for the Motorola one, but who knows? Maybe oh, but not that much. I more. hear that LG is going to partner with Swatch. And uh, Swatch then one. Be, <laughs> I want it to Timex and keep <laughs> takes a lick and keeps on ticking. That's what I need. <laughs> I had many swatches in the eighties. I'm dating myself, but I was a big swatch fan. <laughs> Did you wear five of them on the same wrist at one yeah, time? Of course. Okay. Of course, yes. Who didn't?
<laughs> yeah, exactly. You had to. I mean, they came in like 12 packs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, eventually, they came in cereal boxes. That's right. Pretty much. Uh, and those of you wondering how apps that we know and we love, like Pocket, might approach this new form factor, uh, Pocket actually posted kind of what their interface is going to look like on the device. And, you know, it's just kind of interesting to, to see how an app is is approaching this. There's an animated dealy bob down at the bottom so you get a little story swipe over add to pocket and done so there you go uh to give you a sense that on your wrist somewhat usable i suppose reminds me of glass actually uh and finally here's where things get interesting sony is sticking to their guns android wear is not coming to the sony smartwatch head of sony's mobile us arm ravi nukala said We've already invested time and resources on this platform, and we will continue in that direction. Oh, good. Yeah. So there we yeah. go. Well, you know, we, we, we like to like throw good reason. money after bad. Uh, it reminds me, Qualcomm had a watch at CES, not Android-based, $800. Mm -hmm. it, and their big feature was you could see it outside. But that was pretty much the only thing it could do. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had this huge booth out in the parking lot. And I remember we walked by it, and I was like, that's just sad, guys. It's, it's really sad. And their whole presentation was, we think this is the right way to do. We don't care what everyone else is doing. This is the, this is the future. And yes, it, it doesn't sync to anything else but our chipset. But this is going to be awesome. And that's kind of what I'm getting from Sony, which is we put a lot of development. And let's see how this, this pans out. Yeah. I yeah. feel like it, I feel like no one like did no one on the Android Wear team go why why don't we talk to Sony they already have a watch <laughs> like I feel like what Sony's just saying this just because like we weren't invited to the party we're gonna stick with ours oh it's gonna be better. <laughs> and we're gonna compete with you it's like talk to the hands yeah that's what I you feel what? like it is like why did no one go talk to Sony they make beautiful oh, hardware I'm sure it's, Google at some point had some sort of conversation with Sony to say hey we're doing this thing in the way that like, they had did with the other manufacturers I'd be really surprised if they didn't yeah but uh Sony just you know? Sony's saying, we don't want to go to your party. We're going to have our own party. It's going to be twice as good. We're going to have cupcakes. You're going to cry. We've already spent a million dollars on our party. It's going to be great. Cake. Hey, By the way, you know, F and Dunn is in the better. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, see? Plastic? Not plastic. That's basically <laughs> uh -oh. how I feel that this uh -oh. is. Which the, one do you the, want? The smartphone plastic versus not plastic argument is coming down it's to like, watches oh, suddenly. No. Yeah. That's what we're seeing. This one does look thinner, though, on the, uh, the LG side. But. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's really hard to say scale-wise, but not by much if that's similar scale right there. Uh, and finally, Gina, glass. Yeah, the well, other frontier of style, wearable style, <laughs> wearable technology style. Google yeah. made an announcement uh, that it is working with Luxottica, which is an Italian company that it, that owns the Ray-Ban and Oakley brands of sunglasses. So your next Ray-Bans or Oakleys could have a Google Glass option. This is, of course, following their announcement from a few weeks ago where they had custom frames. Um, so, you know, Google's trying. Google's trying to make Glass stylish, right? They're working with all the right people, but I think Google just needs to show rather than tell. I, I, I want to see <laughs> really good Google Glasses versus hear about partnership deals, but this is this is a good step forward, I think. Oh, there's there's our friend Kevin wearing uh, <laughs> in, his, in his custom frames. Now he's asking uh, look, my, himself, look, like, exactly. I should have got Ray-Bans. Yeah, it's <laughs> the same cost. Got Ray it's should've a decent step, but you know what I want more than anything else? What's that? The ability to fold. Yeah, glass. that's a and big put one. put them away in a case that doesn't look as big as, like, a headphone case. That is a big one. You have to imagine that's part of the priority list for Google because I think everybody that actually gets a pair of glass and tries to live with them for a day feels the same way. Just oh, like it's, isn't it? Isn't it great to have a computer on my head, even though I have to carry a case that's bigger than my laptop? A fifteen hundred dollar computer on my head that, yeah, <laughs> is going to snap if you try and fold it. Uh, but they're, yeah, they're they're making some good deals here. Um, I, I I completely agree. Uh, Ray Bans has got some stylish glasses, and I wasn't never a big fan of Oakleys, but hey, to each their own. Exactly. All right, let's uh, take a quick break and thank our other sponsor for today's episode, and that would be Linda. Lynda.com is an online learning company that can help anyone learn creative software and business skills to achieve both personal and professional goals. Uh, with a Lynda.com subscription, members receive unlimited access to a vast library. They have a ton of videos that you can choose from, uh, current engaging video tutorials across a wide variety of subjects, everything from creative, software skills, business negotiation, app development. With Lynda.com, you'll learn how to code 
create, build Android applications in Java from the foundations of object-oriented Java programming to using the Android API to create engaging mobile apps. Learn to develop apps for today's popular desktop and mobile platforms. Build web apps with .NET, PHP, MySQL, improve your language skills, JavaScript, Ruby, C, C++, R, and much more. There's also a new course on distributing Android apps. Uh, personally, no surprise, I love the Musica tutorials, and uh, there's just a ton on there, right down to kind of setting up my studio at home, you know, the, the acoustics and where to place my, my acoustic foam and all that kind of stuff so that my setup sounds right. And they have a ton of courses on that kind of stuff. So instead of going to YouTube, I go to Linda and I get a very professional presentation of it and not just some dude that, you know, just bought a package of, of acoustic foam and was like, hey, I'm going to staple these to the wall, which is exactly what I did. Uh, improve your skills, learn new software, and keep up with technology. They have over 2,000 courses with new courses added daily. Popular courses... I uh, include Foundations of Programming, Android App Development with Java Essential Training, Android SDK Essential Training, Up and Running with Java Applications, and Building and Monetizing Game Apps for Android. Their instructors are actually working professionals. They're at the top of their field uh, and expert teachers. So they're really good at sharing exactly what they've learned over the years. And that's exactly why you're watching their videos. They're high-quality video production, state-of-the-art studios. These aren't like I said, movies or videos that you're going to find on YouTube shot with a, uh, you know, a, a phone camera. Uh, these are professionally made. It's curated course content, carefully structured so that users can start from uh, learn from start to finish, jump to specific chapters, search through the transcripts that you, you search through the transcripts and it'll take you to a particular point in the video. So if you know exactly what you're looking for, you can jump right to it and skip all the other stuff or you can watch start to the end on whatever device you have. And actually, if you don't make it all the way through, you just stop on one device, pull up your other device, and it's gonna pick up where you left off. It's just a really easy and engaging process for learning. And they cover all sorts of experience levels, beginner, intermediate, advanced, uh, no matter what level you're at, you're going to find something in here and you're going to learn from it. And uh, make sure and check out the new lynda.com Android app on the Google Play Store, which makes it even easier and an even better experience at watching their videos on your device. So here's what you can do. It's only $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library. Or for $37.50 a month, you can subscribe to the premium plan. That actually includes... Uh, exercise files to let you follow along with the instructors using the same project assets that they do. And that's invaluable. You can try lynda.com right now for a free seven-day trial. Visit lynda.com slash allaboutandroid to access the entire library. That's over 2,000 courses for free for seven days. All that stuff for free. Just binge on it. You know, put House of Cards on pause for a while. All right. Maybe you've, maybe you've already watched House of Cards. I don't know what else is more current than House of Cards, but that's what I'm watching right now. Put it on pause and watch all 2,000 videos if you want. In seven days, it's for free. That's lynda.com slash allaboutandroid. We thank Linda for their continued support of this show. All right, let's get into the apps. Indeed. Now, whoa! There we I don't know. It's kind of jazz groovy. I'm just kind of... I just got the love that love that yeah, love that All right, enough of that. Give me my apps. So everyone <laughs> likes the Chromecast, right? I mean, it was one of the best devices of last year. It's a very easy way to get video images up onto your TV. Uh, and yes, there have been ways for you to go ahead and put your pictures up onto your Chromecast-enabled monitor. But now Google has released the Photo Wall app for both Android and iOS. What's different about this app is that it allows for what they call a collaborative experience. So it's not just you, it could be anyone in your group. You can all throw photos up onto the wall, you can all share what you see, you could edit your images before you throw them up there, and uh, then do some sort of collaborative changes to them. Uh, what's nice about this application is that it's sort of feeding into the whole Google connectedness uh, ideology. This is going to be the way that you're going to share your experiences and share your your uh, your videos, your pictures, your content with all your friends. Uh, I, I I don't know. This is this is something that I, I might actually use if if I had friends. Mm, yeah, that's kind of the important part right yeah, there. You have to have friends. The whole friends thing. So mm. so it's just going to be me throwing up pictures on my own screen. <laughs> 
That's so sad. <laughs> but you know, they, they, it, they released a cross platform iOS and Android and browser. So uh, it covers all the bases. Like, it, on one hand, it kind of reminded me of the Nexus Q, the collaborative music. Everybody's in the same space. All you have to do is have NFC on your device and have right. an Android device and blah, blah, blah. And you saw that list go down and down, and you're like, okay, nobody at my party is going to be able to partake in this with exactly. me uh, based exactly. on the requirements that you have. So this at least opens it up. I still don't know if I totally get it. I understand the concept, but I'm just not understanding, like, how fun it is. But maybe that's because I don't have friends. Yeah, I, get it. I think of this in the same way that I, I talked about Google now and that this is the training time, right? We, we want people to get used to thinking that media alone is not enough. Having pictures and video is not enough. Mm -hmm. Now, sharing it with people or editing it so that I can share it with people, that's what we want to do. That's what we want to encourage. I think that's what Google's going for with PhotoWall. Mm -hmm. and it's got atrocious reviews. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't want to mention that part, but yeah. Sorry, yeah. not to be a downer, but wow, it's a 3.0 average and lots of ones. There's almost as many one star as five star reviews. Uh, that's a, that's a, oh, a bit of a red flag. This is obviously oh. a, an experimental early release. Yeah, it's just looking like I can't log in. It's a hassle. Yeah, it's, it looks like a sign-in issue for a lot of a lot of these bad reviews. It's an interesting idea, so, uh, but we got to proof of concept. Yeah, let's of, wait. Let's wait sort. a while. Maybe they'll develop develop this into something that's even easier to use, and then it makes sense. Yeah, I'm re I'm really looking forward to uh, expanded wow. development. For Whenever you see Chromecast. that you on the reviews, yeah, you don't want to see that you ever. Yeah, that's <laughs> not good. <laughs> that's, that's bad. Wow. Like, if I were considering this after the arena, I would look at that and go, mm, mm, you know. a red flag. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but I do like seeing interesting things hitting Chrome, the Chromecast, you know, that, that work with Chromecast. Uh, I hope to see more of that. Uh, this might only be awesome to me. I thought this was pretty cool when I read it. Um, I'm really late to the, uh, portal <laughs> to the portal game. thing. Because I never owned Portal in any way beforehand, but apparently Portal is coming to Android by way of the NVIDIA Shield. Now, not as exciting that it's going exclusively to NVIDIA Shield, and NVIDIA was the one to reveal this, so... Uh, so it's cool. You know, we know that it's going to happen at some point. I really do hope that this means that eventually it'll come to Android because I wouldn't mind. That's, that's the kind of game that I wouldn't mind playing on my mobile device and I don't know. I like seeing that crossover. Um, Portal's a great game, but if I'm going to get excited about this, I want to see it across Android. I don't want to just yeah, see it on one totally. particular flavor. Otherwise, it's just it's a game release for a platform. Yeah. Uh, I'm not right. too excited about that. Yeah. And yeah, I wouldn't say I'm yeah. crazy excited. Do you have the Nvidia <laughs> Shield? Chad? No. No, the reason I'm excited is because if they get Portal to work on the Nvidia Shield, which means that they technically basically got it to work on Android, that means that the whole engine that made Portal should Unity. so you should yeah Unity? no Titanfall. it's not Unity it's no. uh, Source Source so Source. they would have hopefully Half Life running on it Half Life Two Titanfall. all the episodes Titanfall is Titanfall on Source Titanfall is Source what yep that's crazy they have not updated that like engine in, it seems like forever ten years wow wow. Well, they so tweak. if they could get Source on a mobile phone, I'm excited. Or a mobile device, and then maybe a mobile phone later. That'd be exciting. But only NVIDIA Shield, although I'm It's I'm just seeing, an exclusive thing. Yeah, I'm seeing in the chat room, <laughs> NVIDIA Shield is now only $199. So yeah. yeah, but I already have my Android device, so yes, I don't need I know, to carry I around know, another right. one. <laughs> now give me Portal on this, and heck, I'll, yeah, I'm, I'm there. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Would you pay $199 for it? Uh, no. <laughs> for portal no. <laughs> i have it on my computer but yeah the other thing that's crazy yeah. is just like portal yeah. seemed like a, such an innovative game how old is portal seems like it's not that uh, old it was like late 2000s right and it was it was like a lot like it's like just like crazy ago, to me that two it, was, decades it seemed like it was such a, a resource intensive game but. and now it's just on your phone <laughs> or, or on the nvidia shield like uh, uh 2007 2007 yeah. Wow. So, Did we uh, even have computers back then? That was seven <laughs> years ago. Oh, look, look. We're, 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 someone's going to portal into the show. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> uh, or do it. I actually want to see that. That would make the highlight real. Pretty cool. All right. And in other exciting news, 
Maybe not that yes. exciting, but <laughs> that's a little exciting. Yeah, it's kind of uh, cool. Google Keyboard, a new update, brings it kind of closer to SwiftKey. Um, Google Keyboard now on Android now uses detects your typing style in all Google apps and offers up predictions based on your personal typing habits. SwiftKey has been doing this for a while, but you know Google's advantage here is that. It's your use. It's your, it's everything that you type into every Google app across every platform. It's they're, they're definitely getting kind of more more signals. If I'm reading this right, the way that you type in your Gmail on your desktop is going to actually improve the predictions on your Android phone, uh, Google Keyboard. I tell you, I love SwiftKey and I use SwiftKey even though that stupid notification reminder keeps asking me to choose my input. Uh, my input uh, software, which drives me crazy, and is not SwiftKey's fault. Um, but this kind of made me pause and think hmm maybe i should go back and try google keyboard i i, I want this now i am yeah. so sick of my google keyboard being stupid and making the same mistake. and it doesn't matter how many times I, and I, something in the back of my head keeps thinking well it's going to learn if i keep making this mistake long enough it's going to learn and it never does mm -hmm. if it starts to do that if it realizes i never use this word when i do this this sequence um, I'm, I'm all for it i mean that's i want that do it now yeah, that's the yeah. that's the kind of prediction that SwiftKey is obviously known for. Right. Um, although lately, man, SwiftKey has been not predicting right. Yeah. I almost feel like I need to start over or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe just, maybe just I predict maybe maybe I I typed wrong for a long period of time. And I, I, I had typed differently once. or something. I'm not sure, but I was using not, Swift Key and it was so good. And then some. And at some point, it just started getting everything wrong. And I'm yeah. thinking. What did I do that it learned wrong? Yes. And do I have to now delete I feel like, everything? I feel like I have to wipe it out over. and start clean again. Yes. Oh. Totally. Who knows? But uh, who knows? Uh, this this is obvious. obviously a good kind of evolution for the keyboard because once you have that kind of predictive correction, it's really hard yeah. to go back. It it was this yeah. it was one of the big reasons why even though Google Keyboard came out with new features and everything, it didn't have that. And that's what SwiftKey always had. So I don't know. Might check it out for a while. Just you know we'll see. Try yeah, research. Yeah, I, I wonder I mean SwiftKey detects how you type into every mobile app because it's on your Android device. Look, the Google keyboard detects how you type in all the Google apps. And I, and I wonder, I mean, I do type de differently on the desktop that I do on my mobile. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there are certain phrases I use in my mobile app. I, I mean, I type on my way, you know, into my SMS app, you know, a lot, right? So if I type on yeah. my, you know, it's going to predict way. I say no problem a lot, which I hate and I'm trying to stop. But I, I, I do <laughs> tend, to, tend to say that a just lot. Just say and, NP. Uh, just NP. Yeah, I should just say NP. Exactly. Yeah. Well, this is the thing, right? I, I'm much more likely to type NP on my phone than I am on the desktop. So I wonder I wonder how if Google's weighting uh, the activity on your, on your Android, on your mobile device, higher than your desktop. And I, I mean, I'm sure that they are. Uh, but I wonder, you know, what what creates better better predictions? It sounds like Google. I mean, Google certainly has more data, right? But SwiftKey is detecting your inputs across mobile apps, right? Um, so, anyway, keep innovating, SwiftKey. Yeah, um, another feature that I think I just realized needs to happen, at least some sort of uh, some sort of feature around this. When you want to use things like NP or IDK or whatever, but you don't want to be seen as the person that uses those. I type in ID, IDK and it fills it out. And it fills it out for fills me. It, in. it corrects it as I don't know. Actually, I, I although if you that. did LOL and then it said laughed out loud, that would be kind yeah, of. Yeah, no, that, would, that wouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering. Gina, Gina brings up a great point, which is you know we type differently on our devices than we do on our desktop. Yeah, but no, it's very if, important. If it could do that, if it could be smart enough to know what I want to say mm -hmm. and fill it out. Would we no longer type differently on our phones? Would we now use the exact same sort of grammar, the exact sort of sentence structure, if Google was smart enough to do it for us? Yeah, that, that's a really good point because I find myself more and more at my desktop when I type something incorrect, expecting that when I hit the space, it's going to correct it to the thing I intended to put there. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't. Uh, and what's, what, what is preventing Google from not enabling this feature on our regular keyboards in Chrome, right? right. I mean... Yeah. Like you know, some sort of auto suggestive auto filling in. I mean, I mean, it's obviously a lot, obviously a lot more you know useful on our mobile, but mm -hmm. um, make it so. Yeah, it could do that. Absolutely, cool. All right, let's get into the arena. Let's do it. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. Boom! Last week, there were four apps in the arena, 
and with 43% of the votes, agent. Agent. So the top. Dang, I thought I had a shot. I, I heard that it? Ron just agent? got a last-minute surge from India. <laughs> Pro, and Ron's not here, so he probably instru he was probably he instrumental. Got, someone was saying he got that. 41 votes since the show started. Oh, really? <laughs> Ron's not on the show, mm. and his app gets 41 last-minute <laughs> votes. Meeting a Ron. Interesting. Mm. Who wait, was was he agent? Yeah, yes. I believe. yes, he oh, was agent, boy. and he'd been wanting a win. Okay, well there you go. There so, you go. but oh. it doesn't count if you're not here, right? Wade County in the chat says, by the way, Agent had 100 votes when the show started. Hmm. Oh. Ron. Hmm. Wade, Wade it's not looking, it. not looking good for you, boy. Man, we're going to have to we're gonna have, to have a talk to him. One vote exactly every minute. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a whole lot of work, actually, if you break it down like uh, that. So sick. One minute. Uh, oh. One minute. You could even, I, dare I say, you could be in a meeting and do that at the same time. <laughs> All right, fine, Ron. You got your win. Agent, uh, first place at 43%. Dehumanize your friends. I love this, uh, th <laughs> that this was at least up there, and I thought it was going to win. 29%. Uh, third, so that's yours, Gina. Third place was Real Racing 2 at 14%, and people didn't really care for my cast screen. Of course, I wasn't able to show it off in, in its entirety, so I kind of figured that was probably going to happen. That was 13%. So that means I go first. And uh, I'm pretty darn excited about this app. It is called Link Bubble. Okay, so what is Link Bubble? Link Bubble has changed how I browse the web on my device. And I don't think I'm uninstalling it. <laughs> like, ser <laughs> ser a lot of times you feature an app in the arena and it's really great. And then after a couple of weeks, you're like, okay, yeah, it's still really great, but it's just not my cup of tea and you uninstall it, right? Uh, this is one that I think is sticking around. And that's a lot to say for browsing because you do browsing all the time. So it's got to be a pretty interesting thing to change how you browse in your device, especially because I've been on the Chrome bandwagon for such a long time. What is Link Bubble? Link Bubble takes advantage of the little dot that you see on like Facebook chat heads or whatever uh, to load up your web pages in the background. So, for example, I'll go into Reddit here and let's find a story that isn't going to get me into a lot of trouble here and visit that in the browser. How do I do that? So used to using this on my device. Let's see here. Oh, it's an image. Hold on. I don't want an image. I want a link. Let's see here. They're all images. This is not working for me. Why are they all images? I want a link. There we go. Okay, that's all I had to look for, I think. Ooh. Reddit, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> Why does everything have to be an image? There we go. Wikipedia.org. All right. I'll go there. You know what I'm doing? I'm showing how I have absolutely no idea how to use this app on a tablet. <laughs> I use Bacon Reader all the go time, the but I use it on Let's my go phone. go to the phone. There we go. Jeez, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. This is apparently my bad. Okay. Now that I'm here, I can actually do things. So I use Bacon Reader and Reddit a lot to surf for things, you know, for, for the show, essentially. So if I go here and I go to the browser, what happens? Instead of taking me to the browser to load it, it loads it in the background. This allows me to continue to scan through on whatever app I'm in. And it'll load in the background, right? So I don't have to, it doesn't go to a new screen. I don't have to wait for it to load and stare at the empty screen and watch it populate. And then eventually I can read it. I can literally load it in the background and continue doing what I'm doing. When I'm ready to do it, I tap it and boom, there it is. Of course, it's a splash screen, but there it is. There's my app. If I want to share it to get pocket or to pocket, I just drag it over there and it'll automatically share to pocket. Or I could take it over here and it's going to pull up my normal sharing menu. And you can configure that, right? So if I go to Link Bubble, I can go into my settings and tell it, okay, so the left bubble right now is set to, set to add to pocket, which is how I populate a lot of stuff for this show. Um, but I could set this to, you know, whatever I want. Uh, add different actions so that I can share this immediately to Google Plus or whatever, whatever that might be. Um, you can set it so that it auto expands. So the second that the web page uh, is finished loading, it automatically pops up. But I don't like that because that kind of takes the control out of my hands. So 
you know, I just have it kind of do it in the background and it loads into its own kind of web browser on the side. And you can stack them as well. So once I get over there, I mean, if I open it up right now, it's kind of, you know, loading it up in, you know, in due time and I'm watching it, but I could stack up all those links and if I hit back, it'll get rid of it and it's gone. Uh, it's just a really good way of surfing the internet on mobile. It, it prevent what I've noticed over time in using it is that it prevents the click on a link and then stare at the blank screen while it loads thing. You can just literally click on a link and it's there temporarily off to the side for you, waiting for when you're ready for it, not when it's ready for you. Ah, oh, man, that was a little stressful. I think it, it plays in, into the way a lot of people use the web, right? I mean, when, yeah. I, when, like, when I go to the register or I go to dig, whatever, I, I click on the 20 things I actually want to watch eventually and they, they load up in tabs. This is sort of the same thing. I'm just prepping it for my use. Kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I like it a lot. Yeah, it's really handy. So there you go. See, it's off on the side. And, you know, just the, the whole, I, I don't know what to call this this UI thing that we see more and more of these days, the the little bubble over the top. I always think of the chat heads because that was kind of the first time that, that works for me. I feel like I saw it. But it's uh, not a chat head, but it's the sim a similar kind of approach. So there you go. It's called Link Bubble. There is a free version of it. If you pay for it, it's four ninety nine. So it's a little uh, a little pricey, I suppose. But if it's... You know, something that you're going to use a lot, I'm, I'm fine with that. And uh, I don't know. So use the free version. See if it's worth it to you and uh, pay for it if it is. Boom. I think you'll like it. Link bubble. There Link you go. Link bubble. Well, the last two times I was on AAA, I, uh, I'd use games. So I don't want to do the games thing anymore. I, I, I love games, but I thought maybe I want to bring something from my, my Monday show, This Week in Enterprise Tech. So I decided to show off an app that was decent for uh, networking gurus. So if you uh, go ahead and go to my screen, Chad, uh, if if this is in the right place. There we go. Let's, let's do this. So uh, it's a free app called Fing. And uh, what it does is it actually searches through all the devices that are connected to the network that you're currently connected to. And it gives you basic information. So it'll show you their IP address. Now, here's what I love. I can drill down. So, for example, this is John Slanina's MacBook Pro. And now I can I can say, okay, you know what? Go ahead and scan services and show me all the ports that he has open on his MacBook Pro. <laughs> this is an incredibly useful tool. If you are a network administrator, this is the kind of data that, that helps you out. And now that it's contained within your phone, it means that you have easy access to all the information that you might need to diagnose a problem or to figure out why a particular user is having issues. Now, this is just scratching the surface of all the tools that this thing has uh, running, but those are the ones that you're really going to use. Find out who's on your network segment, who's on your Wi-Fi segment, and figure out if they have any open ports that maybe, if you are a gray hat or a white hat, you want to probe for vulnerabilities so that you could tell them that they need to patch their machines. Th this this is something that I, I actually use uh, on a daily basis because anytime I hook up to a, a network, the very first thing I'll, I'll do is I'll scan the network and, and see if there's anything that's it's trying to, to, to probe my machines. Now I can do it on my phone, and the fact that this is free, the fact that it is so easy to understand, and the fact that it, it really gives you an exhaustive amount of information, plus uh, lets you go into the configurations and, and do things uh, like uh, more advanced ways. You can do uh, scanning TCP services. You can do specific pings. You can do trace routes. You can look up your DNS. You could wake up machines that have wake on LAN uh, enabled. It's it's an incredibly powerful tool that uh, since it's free, I think everyone should should have it. Even if you don't know what most of these tools do, at the at the very least, it could sort of introduce you into the world of uh, gray hat networking. Hmm. And now that's the end of my PSA for why you need to hack. <laughs> <laughs> With your squinty so eyes. That's Fing. That are, that's Fing. There we go. And again, as the same thing I say every time I'm on, on AAA, which is I don't care if I win, but I really do want you to, to download this. I'm, I'm serious. Just because it, it's nice to be able to see how networking works. And this shows you how networking works. Awesome. It's Fing cool. Network Tools. And it is free on the Play Store. No reason not to. Yep. Go get it now. Awesome. Uh, good stuff. And Gina, what you got? That's a good app. That's a, that's a tough act to follow. All right. My pick tonight is called Snapdragon Battery Guru. 
Uh, so I don't know. It was a couple of episodes ago, I think, that I complained a little bit about the HTC One's uh, dying battery problem. You know, now that I commute every day to an office and um, use my phone pretty heavily on my commute to and from the office, I find that my phone is just dying a lot sooner than I need it to. Um, you know, even if I charge it through the night, if I basically if I don't charge it at all during the day, if I don't plug it at all in at all during the day, I'm I'm scrambling and I'm saving battery and I'm closing and I'm seeing the little red the the little red battery indicator at the end of the day, and it's really really frustrating because this phone wasn't cheap. Uh, well, Brian, one of a one of AA's listeners wrote in and suggested that I try this app, Snapdragon Battery Guru. It's by a Qualcomm company. Qualcomm is the company that built the Snapdragon processor, which is a very popular processor that's in a lot of phones. And um, here's the thing about battery apps, and, and this is something... Uh, like just to preface, I've never, I'm not never big on apps that monitor your battery and try to make your phone work better because my view of them is like, well, if I'm trying to save battery, why would I run another app that just sucks down my battery? Um, hmm. And why, and I don't want to have to go through and configure all these settings. I just want it to do it itself. Well, this is what Battery Guru does. It's a set it and forget it battery saver app. Uh, so you install the app, which Jason has done. And here's the thing, you don't get results right away. It actually requires two to seven days <laughs> of just running on your phone, getting training data and learning about how you use your phone, what apps you use the most, when you normally charge, um, what are the apps that you launch the most, what apps need to refresh more in the background and which apps don't. So it, so it takes a few days before Battery Guru does anything, okay? But once it's learned your habits and learned how your phone works and how quickly your battery drains, it is very much a set it or forget it thing where it kind of smartly makes decisions about how it can power down your phone and stop apps from updating the background when you don't need them uh, and when you should charge uh, in the background for you. Just does it all for you and it tells you how much battery that it's saving for you so i've been running this i've been running this app for a couple of weeks now and i'm definitely seeing really really nice savings after the very long training period um if you do want to fiddle with settings battery guru has quite a few of them they they offer a couple of widgets uh not the prettiest widgets you've ever seen in the world i'll admit um but widgets that let you toggle on and off you know your normal settings uh display and wi-fi and bluetooth they have a nice low power mode that you can toggle on and off that basically just makes your phone sip, sip, sip its battery the least amount possible and turns off basically everything. Uh, you can go through a list of apps, of all your apps, and set the way that it uses battery. You can say, don't ever refresh your data in the background unless I have you know, launched you, or you can say, hey, go right ahead and, and, and refresh as often as you want. You'd be really surprised. I was surprised to see, especially doing the arena every week, you know, how many apps I've just got installed on my phone that I really don't look at that much, but that are actually consuming battery because they're, they're, they're refreshing in the background. So thank you very much, Brian. This was a really great recommendation for me. My battery life has gotten, gotten a lot better. Um, so you should check it out. If you, it's only compatible with devices that are, have the Snapdragon processor. And I should also warn that inside the app, there's quite a bit of Snapdragon kind of marketing. There's a few YouTube videos and a couple of things about the Snapdragon processor it's just because it's by qualcomm which is you know a company i absolutely trust uh, check it out snapdragon battery guru get a little bit more battery life without having to butts with settings very much more and it's free excellent no i don't want more battery life no i want less <laughs> <laughs> my phone my phone lasts far too Dang long it. I want to charge now. <laughs> I want to have the charge after four hours. <laughs> uh, awesome. That is Snapdragon Battery Guru. So now is the time where you vote and let us know which is your favorite app from today's show. Is it uh, Link Bubble? Is it Fing? Hey. F as in Frank, I N G for those on the audio podcast. Uh, Snapdragon Battery Guru. Those are the three apps to vote uh, for. Choose one and go to AAAPoll.com slash 154. That's AAAPoll.com slash 154. Early results are in and thing is on We haven't top. accounted for India yet. No, we haven't. <laughs> these, are, these are three really good apps, you guys. These I'm are actually, actually yeah. I, I, I actually am getting week, all but. of these, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, these are good apps. You and your good networking job. tools. Wait, there's no game. There's no game on this. this I know, uh, it's this true. Yeah. I like that. That's cool. That's true. Uh, so there you go. We'll check on that next week. <laughs> right there, Fing started taking off. So apparently people like networking tools. Bing. Jeez. Bing.
It's just it's a cool name. <laughs> uh, well, Father Robert, uh, speaking of networking, it's been a pleasure having you on the show, and you do things that are uh, you know related to enterprise and networking and all that kind of I stuff do. with. This Week in Enterprise Tech. Uh, this Week in Enterprise Tech, which, by the way, has one of the most incredible TDs you will ever see. I can't remember his name, but he, he has a show on the Twit TV network. <laughs> no, not that one. Not that one. Hey! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we talk about network tech. We talk about uh, data centers. We talk about what makes bytes and bits go around the world. Um, also, you can find me on Thursdays. I've got two shows on Thursdays. I start off with Know How at 1230. Uh, well, we build stuff. We make stuff. We upgrade stuff. Mm -hmm. And break Break Yeah, we break a lot of stuff. Uh, and Coding 101, uh, me and, and uh, Shannon Moore, snubs, we get together and we show the world how to join the world of the code monkey. So Woo. come on in. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a Thursday. And uh, why not join us? Awesome. Excellent. Doing a lot of cool stuff these days. I like I it. I mean, you usually are. But. but I mean, anytime I'm near you. Yeah. 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 Uh, and Gina, um, you've got some pretty big news, I believe, that... Uh, Kind of, kind of happening right now with with your project that has become much bigger than a pet project. It's become a big deal. Yes, um, Think Up, my company, uh, launched this week, open to the public. I'm really, awesome. really excited. Uh, finally, after a crowdfunding campaign and long, t you know, time beta testing, not being open to the public, finally open to the public, accepting new signups. It's ThinkUp.com. Um, it does cost money and it's for folks who are actively trying to build their kind of online presence. So just two caveats, one to let you know, we're hoping to try and stay in business and we are <laughs> aiming at power users. But if that, that sounds like you do check it out at thinkup.com. Uh, very, very, very excited. And we've got lots of new features rolling out soon, new networks, new insights. Very, very excited. So thanks, Jason. I don't you do the plug. Well, of course, ThinkUp's awesome. I love it. And now that it's open for everybody, I mean, you know, if everybody just follow the show knows we've been talking very highly about it you should check it out for yourself you really should it's a great service um cool well thank you gina thank you father robert uh chad you're over there hey. staring at me just your friendly video switcher friendly neighborhood video switcher over hey here. just happened to be passing by yeah. uh what you got uh well um next week you'll have Brian back so all your transitions will be on time and uh, if you <laughs> want to check uh, me out you can go on over to youtube.com/omgchad where I make uh, YouTube videos and I also host the Gizwiz on the Twit Network and produce shows I guess I don't do anything else anymore <laughs> oh oh and OMG oh. Craft I do a show about Minecraft called that's OMG kind of Craft. important yeah, yeah that one that was the that one. one in fact that's in coming up that's co we're recording after this and I'm trying I'm yeah desperately trying to think of things to record <laughs> with so uh, catch us coming up next there you go uh, what do you got going on Jason oh nothing just the show you know all that Android uh, produced tech news today um I know there's Twiet. other stuff you need to Twiet. Twiet, yes of course mm -hmm. we talked about uh, but you can find all the things that I'm up to. I'm on Twitter at Jason Howell, about.me slash Jason Howell. Musical stuff can be found at yellowgoldmusic.com. And then, uh, you know, I'm a think up. Raygun01.thinkup.com if you really yes. want to check that out. Uh, you can see uh, that. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching this week's episode of All About Android. Uh, we hope to see you next week. Leave us a voicemail in your own voice, your own words. We'd love to play those on the show. 347-SHOW-AAA. Send us an email at AAA at twit.tv. Uh, find the show on Twitter. We are at Android Show. We, are, we have a Google Plus uh, community page. Just search for All About Android. We're all on Google Plus. Uh, Padre's making me uncomfortable. Uh, Reddit, we have a subreddit, twitaaa.reddit.com. Show notes and past episodes can be found at twit.tv slash aaa. You can also find those on iTunes and YouTube. Take a breath. And that's it for this week. Uh, check us out next Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific. We'll see you then at live.twit.tv. You guys rock. Bye.